welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. No moving out of shot. You're not Larry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you're right, I'm not Larry. That was a bit of a bad beginning, isn't it, Josh? That's a, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a bad pun. Yes. <laughs> Trevor, that one's for you. I'm Ari. I'm Kayla. I'm Dan. And I'm Josh. And yes, this is a book called The Bad Beginning. Uh, in particular, we are kicking off our discussions of the series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. Uh, we are going to be talking about book number one, or book the first, in The Bad Beginning. Just two episodes ago, we went over The Composer is Dead by Lemony Snicket. This, so This book here, so make sure you check it out. We are revisiting... Uh, this season, we've actually gone over two works from three different writers. Uh, Lemony Snicket, and Emily Dickinson, and Neil Gaiman. You have a discussion starter, Ari? You got these orphans, obviously, Violet, Klaus, and, and Sonny, and just, you know, ever since their parents died in the fire, that basically destroyed their mansion, which we, you know, obviously was suspicious. And their livelihood. Itself. And their livelihood, yeah. Which obviously was suspicious of itself, like, you then, you, they bring him to this long lost relative named Count Olaf and his, and his crazy, awesome, over the top theater troupe with all these ridiculous mm -hmm. qualities and stuff. And, and that's basically what we have. So the discussion starter I have is, is this believable? There are elements to this that are believable. I think that the strongest element is the fact that this is what you can consider new territory for readers because this is the that's beginning. Why it was so revolutionary. Yeah, this is know. the beginning of a more negative and bleak uh, landscape for. Because in order for something to be yeah. that strong and that negative, it needs, it really does need to be somewhat believable, yes. because otherwise it becomes like a, a almost like a feel good. And, and yeah. this is not what you want. The, the, believa the believable aspect is the orphans themselves, Violet, Klaus, and Sonny. They they warrant a great deal of sympathy from the reader. And it's very easy to have empathy for them, and not in the oh, woe is me kind of way, because by no means were they that way. Yeah, they're kids. It's hard to yes. have that opinion. But you have Violet, who is, Violet is an inventor. Klaus is a reader. Sonny's a biter. Uh, more so just in general, a And generally tries eating. to be good throughout this entire Yes, thing. and everybody, everybody, uh, the, the orphans, they all mean well, and they all are in situations where they need to respond to various events. And uh, I think that there are moments where me, the reader, someone said something and I came to one conclusion and they read my mind in how they came to that conclusion. And I like that. Except it took a couple pages to get to that point. But For instance, when... It's, think, it's nice yeah, when the when characters read it exactly the way that you read it. Yeah. Yeah. Really I mean, good. I think that's part of the beauty of this is like mm -hmm. it is written yeah. in a it's a very simple format because it's it's supposed to be an introduction for children to learn about the horrors of reality, and I think that to do that you have these three very well thought out young characters and they say things in a very simple manner so you draw the same conclusion as them. You know, like they're mm -hmm. not. They're not childish, but they're meant for children, you mm -hmm. know? And I think that's a very important aspect of this. I'm going to mm -hmm. counterpoint you slightly. I agree with you, but I'm also going to make a counterpoint. I don't think this is just for children. I don't think so either. No, no of no. course not. I, I think, think there, there are absolutely, there are, I think it was designed not just for children is what I meant to say. And that's that's good quality entertainment. I yes. think I think Lemony's going to have to be able to uh, I, I think he both. has written something like, this is why I think this was revolutionary back when this came out, mm -hmm. which I think was, was 2003? I think this, this was, this was published uh, in 99. 99? Okay. Yeah. yeah so, know, um, this came out. I might be thinking of the movie, but... Yeah. Yes, 1999. Right, so the, um, yeah. it's revolutionary because you have a genre where Kayla had said it was talking about how you're... Um, just repeat what you said. It's so. meant to like introduce children to the horrors of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's introducing children to what Kayla said, but um also for adults, it's talking about well, you know, it help, helps you feel for people, and also mm -hmm. just to look 
and see, okay, I, I can sympathize with what you are feeling right now in a mm -hmm. work of fiction. That, yes. It also teaches children how to feel for people. Yes. Right. It yes. Teaches because that's important. Children. I also think it's entertaining to read as an adult because it's written in a very tongue-in-cheek style. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's, it's got entertaining to read. Like, you yeah. read this and you're like, that... This is just fun. It's Let me fun. Think it, he speaks to he speaks directly to the reader yes. yeah. in a fourth yeah. wall kind of way. Yes, and I mean even just the fact that Lemony Snicket isn't his real name. He's going by this like ridiculous pen name just yeah. for the fun of it, really, yeah. because he wants Lemony to be his own character in the mm -hmm. series. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, also, oh, also, like, also remember he's used that name before, yes. Yes. so this is yes. this is a whole. Mm. It's, it's bigger like than just the series. Yes. Yes. His real name is Daniel Handler, and we both have the same birthday. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it is. It's hmm. quite. Is is the day before Leap Day? Yep, day before uh, February twenty eighth. I'd say I actually like birthday. the way the book is written because it's kind of got like you just said tongue in cheek humor, but like the thing is the fact is that it's very bleak in a way mm -hmm. and melancholy. But it also works to its humor because it's kind of like a dark, dry humor. Yeah, it's which a weird I, macabre setting. Yeah, yeah which I kind of like. And the thing is, like, if you've watched uh, the movie or the Netflix TV series, which is far superior. Highly recommend. Mm. Yeah. Jim Carrey's. Uh, it's kind of yeah. got that, uh, you know, surreal look to it. To, like, it's aesthetic and the stuff mm -hmm. that's going on. Like, I, like there's a whole episode where they're, where they're in a fish restaurant. Like, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Which, uh, the thing is, I, I like about this, so the thing is, like, yeah, it's kind of bleak, but it's not too bleak, where the thing is, like, you, you know, you feel like you're reading a sad story and you want to cry at the end of it. It kind of gives mm -hmm. you, like, a little bit of a humor, so the thing is, that way, you know, because if, if I read, because I read this as a kid, and if, if it was super, super bleak, I probably wouldn't have liked it as a kid. The ending to this was pretty sad and bleak, but yes, but as, but a, as a reader, I mean, as the fact that there are twelve more books in the series, uh, yeah. you have that idea that uh, there is more to come. But. Mr. Poe is completely incompetent. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I liked Justice Strauss. Uh, uh, Justice Strauss is the best. Was, to me, she, she reminded me of uh, a Sonia Sotomayor. As she was, a, she was, she was very. Neighbor, right? She just had a very yeah. outgoing <laughs> and pleasant personality. Very encouraging, enthusiastic. It's like, oh, you're not going to be living here. You're going to be living over there. <laughs> oh, it was more so. Oh, oh yeah, at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> yeah, at the very beginning. But yeah. she was going to adopt them. But according mm -hmm. to the will, it had to be a relative. Uh, but I think it was just poorly executed to go by demographics so as, the opposed to, to. as opposed to finding a the proper too, so relative. Of but. course, but I think again, like it, we, because it's written mm. with its main audience being children, mm -hmm. um, to go the simplest route and not over-explain mm. like the way adoption works or the way wills work or anything like that is is your best bet. But explain it enough story. that adults can appreciate. It. Right. Yeah. Right. But then again, uh, I think that if there was one thing that added to the story, but I think was a big flub up on Klaus's behalf, but. Granted, Klaus is my favorite character because... <laughs> he's a reader. He, he's a reader. <laughs> yeah. uh, but... Mm. Like, do you wear glasses? No. I, actually, you, I do. You, yeah. You, yeah, I was about to say, I'm you do wear glasses. What are you talking about? <laughs> I wear glasses. <laughs> I, I will wear... The, you will see me in some videos where I'm wearing glasses, but I don't yeah. wear them well on the Which is why I hate the movie, because Klaus did not wear glasses at yeah. all. And, but, and he was the same height as, as Violet. Yeah. But... Um, in the movie. Yeah, they, they, they changed things up in the movie. It's, uh, like... Jim Carrey was cast, which never happened. Jim Carrey's just an annoying actor. Mm -hmm. He's just, if just making clownish, funny faces is not over. Well, here's the thing: is like That's Pat Olaf is an interesting yeah. character because he's both sinister yet whimsical mm -hmm. in his ways. Because like mm -hmm. I hate Count Olaf. I hate him too. I, to I, I, didn't that. That. I didn't want to like say him. it. I didn't want to <laughs> say it because I, I I was worried someone would get mad. But if you're saying it, then I can. Say it's it. just who does it's a bad guy. You're not supposed to. That's like what we're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, but there's a difference between just unlikable and hate. Is you what should I'm saying. See Larry and I so going at each other's though. throats over the bald soprano. <laughs> I feel like. But. Olaf is so vicious, though. He's yeah, so he's terrible. immoral. Just the fact. I mean, he, he tried to marry Violet. She's for working. money. Oh. And then kill. He was gonna kill Klaus and Sonny, and then just suck Violet dry. Yeah. And it, it's like if. Uh, it's a vampire. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it reminds me of uh, Aristotle Count Onassis. Olaf. Only uh, Onassis wanted sex, uh, and okay, Jackie wanted money. <laughs> Oh, it would it would have gotten to that, even though yeah, Olaf really. denied it. But I really hope it did. I'm glad we didn't ever yeah. have to visit that. Going 
back even more. Like One of the stories. flub ups on Klaus's behalf is the fact that when he came across the details as to what Count Olaf was planning to do with his special little feature, he ex he confronted him on it when he should have just told Violet, mm -hmm. expose him then. Well, maybe it wouldn't have been a story, but may it maybe have, maybe it the reason he did that was because he was trying to. He didn't remember this is the first book, so we don't really know much about the relationship between the Baudelaire's and Count Olaf yet. So maybe he, he's like, okay, well, he's a bit of a mad guy, a star guardian, we still should bring it up, mm. and like you know, at this point, obviously in future books that's never going to happen. Mm. But but like at this point, maybe he's just like, okay, maybe there's like this one small, maybe he doesn't understand, or maybe there's like one small thing going on that maybe he'll change his mind or not realize what he's doing. It is possible and that, and I always throw that possibility once, in. Once you put once you put them in deadly danger though, you lose your you lose your uh, that, that, that is you true. lose the ability to be able to that fend that, after that, that, I, that I can agree with though. So. It is like a running thing with the Baldurs though. They always try to do the right thing and they do always make it a point to try and respect their guardian. Mm. Yeah. Throughout the, the whole That's series. what Mr. Poe you gotta remember the fed into them. Yeah. But Right, right. They, he wouldn't. Mr. Poe was, was oblivious to. You know, I'm almost Olaf at the point. Then. I'm oh, at yeah. the point where, and I'm actually serious about this. I think that if Count Olaf, oh, Count Olaf, you know, if he had done all these horrible things to the Vaudelaires, and then finally, like, they realize, like, oh, you know, Count Olaf is, I don't know, trash. No, 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 no. Like he's sick. Uh, di like not not dying well, naturally, but dying because something is is forcing, and they can actually do something to help them. I feel like they would, they even, would. even with they all, all this would. stuff going on. They absolutely would because the builders are that kind of because people. Because they're yeah. the moral to especially Count Olaf's immoral. especially right. looking so, at it through this particular story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, did but. you guys finish the rest of this? Have you finished the no. rest of the I, series? I, 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 got this book. I, have, I don't I, even own the rest of the series. I, I, I never read I it. Have when I, was I have finished the series and. I have d I have made it a very sworn thing, and and this is like a, a vow between Trevor and I is that we kind of um, discussed the last book together one time, and we vowed never to speak of it to anyone else to avoid spoilers. And we okay. appreciate yeah. you and Trevor. Yeah. And I do plan on reading the last three books. Read yeah, absolutely read it, but I will not even mention anything that happens in book thirteen because it's just it's so important. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not even it's not even that. It's, it's <laughs> But, but I will tell you, it is a little bit of a ride to get there. There are some books in there that feel a little bit out of place. But well, I mean, there, there's like 13 of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I think true. I think yeah. it was designed by um, Handler slash Snicket to make 13 books. I think he didn't really prepare his story beyond seven or eight of them. Mm. And then he kind of had to put filler in until 13. Yeah. Mm. And that's kind of why... Some of the stories are a little mad. Well, I mean, like, could I feel spread like the it out. As a whole was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think the series as a whole was a little spread out, but I think this particular book was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great beginning. It's well, even book. though it's called the bad yeah. beginning. Yeah, they, they don't <laughs> listen to the. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was a strong opening. Yeah, I also I like the alliteration in every title. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Uh, Ellie and I were talking about that. Uh, my 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 friend my things. friend Rebecca loves alliteration so. So she'll always try to come up with sentences for alliteration. I should probably point her in the direction of these books. So. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I'm definitely going to make my way through the series. Yeah, I just need that. Well, yeah. I do have another question. If everyone's okay with that, sure. sure. Uh, I wanted to talk more about the the adult because we are adults. I wanted to talk about the adult perspective of this mm. book. So obviously, we kind of went over the kids' perspective. Um, what do you feel was like the adult perspective? I, I will kind of say that my perspective on the book. It's like, well, obviously, what is happening is, is really, really bad, you know? Yeah. What Olaf is doing is bad, but it almost feels like what Olaf is doing is basically, in some respect, what a lot of people in the world are doing right now. Maybe not to that extent, obviously, because it's a oh, fiction yeah, book, no. but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, it still so could happen. Yeah. It's, it's happened... Taking mm -hmm. advantage he, he of is, people. He is... There are abusive guardians, which mm -hmm. he has demonstrated. Uh, right. Yeah. The but whole thing about the the one episode that sticks out is the uh, when they when he told them to I, an event, but when he told them to make dinner for him and his troop, and, oh, yeah, and he slapped but he, Klaus. he didn't say yeah he slapped, but he didn't tell them what he wanted. He didn't tell them that he wanted roast beef. Mm -hmm. So they looked through cookbooks and made putanesca. Yes, putanesca. Yeah. Yeah. And you would think that there would be some sympathy from his troop, but they were just as equally vicious. 
as well, that's what I'm saying. Like, the only one that had a, the only one that had a sense of decency, if you even want to call it that, was the man with the hooks yeah. because he was he was straightforward with Klaus about what. Count Olaf's expectations. Well, the hook-handed man has a very interesting um, story uh, yes. throughout the entire series. I don't want to yeah. go into it too much, but okay. I will say his story does get more interesting. Okay, yeah, but... And it's for a very good reason. Yeah, there are adults that will act this way, yeah, maybe not as extreme or as vile as Count mm. Olaf, but... But that is... The basic elements. That's, that's, that's part of the point I was yeah. going over, but the other half of the point, of course, is the perception of this. Like... We see these kinds of actions, whether they be these kinds of actions in the book or something maybe like of equal uh, negativity and, 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 and horribleness, for lack of a better word, but not the same action. You know, we mm -hmm. see it all the time. And to read it in a fiction book almost reassures us, like, wait a minute, these are things that happen. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. these, the, yeah. like, it may be a little bit ridiculous the way it's portrayed. Yeah, but sure. But, I mean, mm -hmm. if... An author is writing a fiction book about this. They always say truth is stranger than fiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yeah. I think um, the like adult characters in this too are very archetypal. They're they're not really fully fleshed out characters. I they think more that represent was done deliberately. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. But they more just represent archetypes. I think the same about the Baudelaire ki kids. Like they're not super. Um, deep characters, they represent something. Yeah, and that's that's actually a point that I wanted to bring up. There's only one bottle there that I actually like really can appreciate, and that's Sunny. And the only no, I'm I'm actually serious about this because I think Violin and Class are great characters, and, but they have that preteen arrogance that you know you can feel, and as much as they are important to the story and as much as they are important characters and obviously you want them to do everything that's right they do tend to become a little bit unlikable at points that doesn't mean they're bad maybe as the series progresses not even even in this book it's kind of i mean not i i didn't feel any sense of distaste for them especially because of the circumstance i think that it's very easy to uh, stand in their shoes because we as individuals have thoughts like that sometimes, even yeah. if we don't want to admit it. Which is the what point, matters, which is exactly what yeah, I was about to what say. What matters is the overall, uh, at, uh, your, your overall being, uh, because you have a right to think a certain way, and you have yeah. a right to contemplate arrogant or a bit more self-serving ideas. It's just as long as you are treating people with respect and decency. But the thought you just mentioned is a thought that I was going to finish. Is that mm. even though you have a distaste in what the characters act like, it's good for the story to have those negative, um, little, tiny, itty bitty little things. Um, like if you had a character, Valen and Klaus, that like were not that were like Sunny, I suppose, who didn't really have many issues other than like the physical. Sun Sunny was a toddler, and I feel that she was portrayed uh, right. just as such. Sometimes she would have responses to the intense situations, well, but it yeah. was very top of the line. But if they were to have those qualities and not be have the arrogant teenagers, again, it would, we would lose the realization, the yeah. realisticness of this yeah. um, story. So that's why this book, I think, also comes out so well and was so revolutionary, I think. I really appreciate books where the f character flaws are more evident than the character development. Exactly. Because, mm. like, if they were just, like, you know, like, goody two-shoes, like, always do the right thing, mm -hmm. it would be kind of boring, you know? You want to mm -hmm. read it, because the thing yeah. is, nobody wants to read a story where a character is just perfectly good or just perfectly evil. Mm -hmm. They want complex, mixed characters, I which felt, is I why felt, I, like I felt that way yeah. with um, Harry Potter, for instance. Wooden or one-dimensional. Harry Potter, I mean, the beginning of it, anyway. The, en the ending was a little more complex, but the, the beginning of the series very much felt like the way Dan just described it. Yeah. I mean, I also think it's important that we're, like, teaching people that it's okay to have these negative thoughts on occasion, you know? Like, yeah. as long as you choose goodness in the long run. The same thing with Klaus making a mistake in this book. Yes. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay yeah. to to yeah. be upset and have these negative feelings as long as you're able to still choose goodness over bad. Mm -hmm. In many cases, if they take the same direction all the time and you always see a positive outcome in every situation or the same equation, it becomes predictable. And, like, and this and like, was not predictable uh, in any which way. No. Uh, I mean, I, I love that curveball that uh, Violet threw during the, uh, the feature with her and 
signing with their opposite signing hand. Signing with the opposite hand, which <laughs> by the law is uh, yeah, it doesn't work. Doesn't work as uh, it doesn't isn't recognized. But I think that's also um, a, a very good point. Like there were times that I did appreciate the um, the characters without any kind of distaste. That was definitely one of them. Um, but you have to have a mixture of both, and that's the best characters. And honestly. I say this now, I can't think of another young adult book that has a characters, or three, we'll say two, because Sonny's a toddler, but <laughs> two characters that are mixed, like, perfectly, yes. bad and I good, think, yeah. it is written so well. The I problem know, yeah. is, later in the series, this gets lost. It's more focused on, like, you know, you said Klaus was a reader, a lot of the later part of the series is focused on his talent, not on his character, mm. um, but the beginning, anyway, it, it definitely... Uh, works yeah. out in the first like five or six books and and it's just absolutely wonderful i'd have to make my way through the series before i do that definitely do that definitely yeah. do that i'll definitely uh i'll definitely highly consider uh keep uh keeping things going with the uh the series yeah, like i like there's so many things i want to mention but the it's thing good. is they happen in the later books so i don't, I don't want to say I anything <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I'm trying to restrain I, myself a little bit too so i've read the first 10 books the 11 12 and 13 had come out yet and i never got them but mm. yo I've been trying like not to like spoil anything, but because I, I just want to keep it just to this book from what yes. we know, you know, what Cal all off is. As I mentioned, I, I just love the way the book is written with like its humor and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say is, this is not the last you'll see of Cal all off. No, oh, but oh, oh, definitely, not. definitely not. <laughs> the yeah, the rule of thumb is going to be we uh, like for instance, if we go over the reptile room next, uh, you can talk about the reptile the room is the second book. You can talk about the first two books. Mm -hmm. Then with the third the wide window, the wide window, you can do the first three, the wide and, and goes from there. The wide window to the wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you cannot finish that sentence. <laughs> I'm not going to finish. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts? Revolutionary. Not just this book, but the series in mm. general. It's, Absolutely. It's probably still one of my favorite series. Like even uh, reading again for a second time. As an adult, I got much more out of it than I did as a kid because there's so much I didn't recognize at first when I first read it. You, if you have not read, let, I'm just going to say, the, you know what, it's a big series, so 13 is a lot to ask. If you have not read the first seven books of this series, those are the best ones. Mm. And you can technically, technically speaking, I feel that you can stop after seven because there's a bit of a... A disjoint between seven and eight, but the story still continues. Mm -hmm. If you can read the first seven stories of series of unfortunate events, it will be time well spent. I think that with uh, but thirteen is yeah. even better. I think that as far as really immersing yourself in the series is concerned, and what I'm going to be doing is reading all thirteen. It really. I, and that's I what say, you should do. I'm just saying for yeah. people who are it's a little like less patient than it's you It's like with The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. The right. first book was great, and then the series started to tank. Catching Fire and Mocking Jay, I could not. I did not like those books, but it. But you have to read them. Yeah, yeah. the prequel coming out. It, it's it's kind, it, it, the prequel's out. already out, and my friend Rebecca has already read it. Me too. Mm -hmm. But that's for a different day. Right. Um, oh, it's kind of the same thing with Girl with Dragon Pet too. I like yeah. the first one, and same thing with Aragon too. I liked Aragon. I didn't like the other ones. Yeah, I, I like the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I also like the Girl who played with fire. The girl who kicked the hornet's nest was good, but I'm not right. And uh, the rest yeah, of the how many welts did you get from doing that? Something I wanted to bring up was the the faith that Lemony Snicket had in his readers and how he was able to guide them with regard to, uh, for instance, he was, he used words that uh, vocabulary teachers would have a ball with, uh, yeah. and then he would explain to them what that word meant. Mm -hmm. it a, I think that's a, like there's a, uh, one of the later books that they explain what, what means, you know? Oh. Which I, I thought was kind of funny because, you know, what sometimes, depending on how you say it, may have different meanings. And the way that Lemony Snicket speaks to the reader, it's perfect. You know who I honestly I think that reminds me of? Uh, Lemony Snicket's way of describing words and, and, and different definitions. It reminds me very much of Norton Duster. Huh. And it really does, because in Phantom Told With, you'll see very similar examples where you have like words that could mean more than one thing, and then he in Norton Jester will take that and he'll play with the word mm -hmm. and he'll say, "This is what it actually means." So he he was able yeah. to say reality meant 
that nothing is there, but yeah. everything is there, and everything is solid. He, he was able to say illusions were things that were not solid, but that you could see. He ingrains it within the Which, text, though. So I would say, I would see him as a middle ground between Lemony Snicket and Lewis Carroll, because Lewis Carroll is uh, obviously... Lewis Carroll's a good example, too. Lewis Carroll's obviously getting at a message, but he isn't speaking to the reader in that way. He's completely putting it into... Alice's perspective. Yeah, into Alice's perspective, into the And you're saying the that world. Jester's kind of doing it bo with both, yeah, and that Snicket, and that Snicket is, is doing it as if we're talking to the reader. Yes. Gotcha. So, yeah, it would be... That. It's 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 um writers like that yeah. that I really think the ones Stick that kind Carol of Jester. the the kind of ones that break the fourth wall but also yeah. like not only break the fourth wall but also kind of do it from the perspective of the characters as well mm -hmm. or what you would think the perspective of the characters yeah Snicket be. breaks fourth wall but he does it as Snicket for the most part yep also read Snicket's parts as Patrick Warburton it's way better. <laughs> yeah, that was something I do want to mention, is that, like, obviously we all know that the older movie is, like, I mean, whatever. It is what British. It, is. it was the best thing we got. But the Netflix series does a fantastic job of capturing the feel mm -hmm. of the series, and it's wonderfully cast, that, and it, it really, really does break it down in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Patrick Warburton's also, he's been he's tapped up, isn't he? Yeah, he's he Joe. Joe Swanson. Yeah, he, he's tapped often to do speaking roles because mm -hmm. people love his speaking voice. Oh my voice. god! He's kind of, it's like uh, him and Morgan Freeman is the other one that people love their speaking voice. I wish we could like, do a review of the TV series because things like, it not only like captures the book perfectly, but it also like improves on some parts that were kind of lacking. But if it's not written to work, you, it's not yeah, it's not it, you can incorporate references as Unless long you can as find it the pertains I mean, to the, as long as it pertains to the particular. But it's hands. it's yeah. it's based off of written work, doesn't it? Yeah. No. 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 I mean, no, the series no. <laughs> but the, I mean, if you talk about something that happened in the book and also adapted into the series, then. Well, uh, the, almost the entire book is that. Yes, I mean, if you, if you talk about a moment and then attach, uh, put the two together. Uh, but yeah. How would we rate it? Zero to five stars, half stars. Uh, I, did, I did have one more thing I wanted oh, to mention yes. real quick. Um, I, I wanted to go back to what I had said about Sunny because I was going to go on to a quick point about that. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think that, you know, the, the reason I think that I appreciate Sunny's character despite only being a toddler <laughs> is I think, like, Sunny is, like, despite her biting and her, like you said, the intense. Uh, <laughs> stuff that happens while obviously the reactions that happen having that extra bit of young youthful positive energy that in someone that doesn't really understand what is going on kind of brings a complaint uh, it, 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 it puts like a brand new perspective on the story that you wouldn't have gotten i think if it's just violent clouds i think by having that that um that little Having, having Sunny there actually puts like okay, well she's just been born, and mm -hmm. and no matter what's gonna happen now, you know hopefully she will eventually be able to move on. Mm -hmm. um, and you know there's always a, a few year old though because uh, right a year is not that much not much but uh, more so than an infant right but what I'm saying is that I don't remember anything before I was like four mm. like the, the question is when the time comes, how is... This is always a question I have for everyone. And you guys... Wait, can, you gonna remember any of this? How is Violet and Klaus going to explain the situation when she becomes of an age where she can understand it? Mm. And, and, I, and that's a rhetorical question for now, mm. but it's a question to think about because it's something I tend to... Mm -hmm. I even asked Trevor this question. He didn't have an answer. But, but as far as Violet... It also gives Violet and Klaus something that they have to look at... Uh, someone that they have it, to look it gives at. Them, it gives and them a bit of a threat... Uh, yes. uh, buffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because... Not only do they have to grow up immediately for their own accord, but they're also looking after. They're now parents. They're civil. Yeah, they they are. Well, the parents. I mean, yeah. if, 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 she, if she marries Count Olaf, that would be a little bit. Yeah, technically, <laughs> Count Olaf is the parental figure, but he, you can't even say that because he doesn't qualify. Right. Yeah. Already, how would we rate it? Zero to five stars. Half stars permitted. All right. Give me a four and a half. I think this is one of the best books, best series out there, at least at the beginning, since we're talking about the beginning, I'm going to vote it that way. Um, I think there's not many books out there that are better 
uh, novel, young adult novels are young novels that are better than, I think, uh, Bad Beginning, Reptile Room, and all these other uh, stories. Definitely going to give it a four and a half. I'm definitely going to recommend it to everybody out there. Uh, if you're a impatient reader, if you're a little bit someone who is not sure, definitely at least read the first seven if you can, and then decide if you want to continue, um, because that's where all the important chunks are, and then from there on out, I think getting to 13 would be a great goal, especially for someone like you, Josh, who loves to mm. gobble up books like Thanksgiving mm. dinner. Mm. And I think I would gobble this series up like Thanksgiving dinner. Hey, look, I mean, look how many turkeys you have in this room. Man, you you, mm. you, you could be, like, full up full for the rest of your life. You'd be mm. settled if, these were, if, if books were food. Like, mm. real, proper, physical mm -hmm. food. Just so. give me some more stuffing and gravy. Yeah. I'll whip it. When we get you out the door, we'll make sure we have a little... Uh, thing so you can get out. Oh, what, what's, this, what's this me getting me out the door? I don't think you're going to wave like that if you are. <laughs> oh. oh, you're talking about after I eat the box. Yeah. He's saying about four foot. Mm. That's the word I wanted, yeah. Okay, well, anyway, what do you think? Um, I would say I would give it a four and a half as well. I just, I love this series as a kid and I love it just as much as an adult. I think there's something in it for everybody and it's just fantastic. Yeah. I would have to say uh, probably a four. Uh, the thing is, I absolutely loved this series when I was a kid, and I definitely loved reading it again. Uh, and the thing is, honestly, I feel that the series does get better from this book. As he mentioned, the first seven are really great ones. Uh, I read the first ten. Ten, ten was all, I, I thought was also a really great. Ten one. was good, yeah. I think it definitely gets better from there on there. I'm gonna give it a five. Woo! Wow, really? Because Heck yeah. I think I think that this does. Everything that it sets out to do, as far as Josh gave it a five, it's a five, okay? Those are the rules. Yeah, usually Josh's fives are my four and a half. So, like, there's only one book I ever gave a five to, and I've already mentioned it today. So I can't give it any more than you four. gave. Can I give it a four point nine 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 nine? Not you gave. You gave, uh, and then there were none of five as well. Oh, two books then. And I was the lone person out with that. But but wait, if if I can give, you said half stars per minute, but am I permitted to give Bad Beginning a four point nine? Nine, 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 I repeated. said half stars permitted, not decimals. Okay, permitted. so then, it's, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna be stuck on four and a half. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think that the central characters are developed perfectly within this piece. The uh, Count Olaf is developed very well, and how immoral and how much we we hate him. And I mean, some people have may have a snapish kind of disposition where. They may garner some sympathy, but there's no sympathy for Olaf. There's no, there's no sympathy for Snape either. Except but. possibly from the Baudelaire's. We don't know that yet. But as far as I mean, we could learn more mm -hmm. from because we we only know so much within this piece. But this does a perfect job laying out the groundwork, giving us particular instances where the uh, Baudelaire's Baudelaire. Baudelaire's <laughs> it's hard to pronounce. and uh, ba, 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 where the Baudelaire's have to adjust to this new way of life. The style of storytelling, the sense of cynicism and bleakness, I think that is just very innovative. It's very original. I think that uh, Lemony Snicket uh, found an opening and he really... Uh, made his mark. So you, so just just for the record, you've only read this one? This is the only one I've read. Okay. And I definitely will be reading the rest. I can't wait. To, to give you, to give it a five, even yeah. that, that being the only one you read, is actually, that's that's even more amazing. Mm -hmm. And this is, tw uh, like, 25 yeah, years after the 20, book came yeah, out. 20, yeah, I'm 28 at the taping of this, so I'll be, uh, it's, I'll be 29 by the time this comes out, mm -hmm. and, uh, First time I've ever read it, and I'm a fan. It should have been something I read before, but uh, my reading tastes were far different when I was younger. So, if you are interested Which in reading be. uh, this particular book, uh, here is my copy. Uh, I bought mine from Hooked on Books in Wildwood, New Jersey. And no, it's not owned by the Hook Handed Man. I no, it's not. bought mm -hmm. mine at a bookstore that no longer exists, so it doesn't really matter. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure mine is an OG nineteen ninety nine copy and my pages are yellow. Mm. The one I have which I don't have with Antique. me yeah. got from Barnes Noble. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more videos from our channel. And uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like the video, be sure to let us know and give hey. us a good old like. Hey Josh, guess what? I'm Count Olaf. 
One book, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two books, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Three books, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Where's the lightning and thunder? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Be sure to join us next time on another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading. <laughs> Hi there, this is Josh, and on the next episode of Literary Gladiators, we will be discussing March Book One uh, by John Lewis, uh, with the help of Andrew Aiden and Nate Powell. Casey, Sarah, and I will be taking part in our very first Zoom discussion about this graphic text. This is a graphic memoir of the late representative uh, John Lewis. And we will be joined by a very special guest, Maya from Bespectacled. If you like what you see on this channel, please support us on our Patreon, for the money that we make will help us provide you, the viewer, with even more content. Thank you for watching this episode, and until next week, keep reading.